I'm Pamela Pagano here at Place du Canada in downtown Montreal for the Justice for Joyce vigil. It is now two years since the death of Joyce Eshaquan. And as you can see, Montrealers are standing in solidarity with her family and the Atikamaka community. Community. She died while live streaming as hospital staff in Joliet hurled racial remarks at her. A coroner's report found that systemic racism contributed to her death and she would likely still be alive if she were a white woman. I'm joined by Nakuset, the executive director of the Native Women's Shelter here in Montreal. Nakuset, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Happy to be here. Thank you. So now, Nakuset, tell us what is the importance of us being here today? I mean, we're here because we want to support Joyce. We want to support the fact that uh, we're outraged when an Indigenous woman goes into the hospital and is mistreated, uh, disrespected, and then dies. I mean, it is completely outrageous that it happens. It's outrageous that the nurse is still practicing that she has been reinstated in her position. It sends a real strong message that we don't care about Indigenous people. People are not applying the Viennese Commission recommendations. They're not applying Joyce's principle. So we come here today because we care and we want change and change needs to happen immediately. And now uh, here today at the vigil, you spoke just uh, right behind us and you brought your son up, uh, one of your sons up with you. Now, Joyce had uh, seven children. Yeah. Tell us what was the importance of you having your son with you today? Well, the thing is that, I mean, any mother, like their biggest dream or biggest, ne like, you, you want the best for your children. You want to see your children grow up. You want to be there for them. And Joyce, that was, that was lost. Those children, she has seven children that have no mom. And we know what kind of trauma that leads. And I think that, you know, in terms of like multi-generational trauma, that is something that they're going to have to carry. That is something they're going to have to, to deal with and try to heal from. But God forbid they should have to go to the hospital. That is going to be such a trigger for them because they'll remember the hospital as a negative place where their mother died. And I don't know what that hospital is doing to make amends with the community, to make amends with that family. But I brought my child here because I want him to be confident that when he is an adult and goes into the hospital, he be, he'll be treated well. We need to do that for the next generation. It doesn't seem to be happening with this generation, but we got to keep pushing. We got to keep pushing. And now I'm going to ask your son a question. So now tell us what's the importance of you being here today? because I care about Joyce's family. Wow. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Nakuset, tell, uh, talk to us a little bit more about Joyce's principles. I mean, the community was the one who created this principle, and it's basically a set of protocols that the hospitals should follow. The problem is that you have a premier that refuses to recognize it. He refuses to recognize systemic racism, and it's very damaging for Indigenous people. What is really hard is that we have Vienne Commission's recommendations that have gone ignored through all the different institutions. Youth protection, the police, the court systems, hospitals, everything has been ignored. So I'm not surprised that they're not adapting Joyce's principles, but I know that there are some hospitals that are trying to do it. If you don't get the, the premier to uh, acknowledge it and to embrace Joyce's principle, things will continue the same or get worse. And we are seeing that um, people are still un unwilling to go to the hospital unless they really need to. And when they do go to the hospital, that they get abused. So I have uh, Lucy Catherine from the McGill uh, Legal, um, the McGill Legal, sorry, the McGill Nurses Clinic. She comes in twice a week. She brings students with her. They accompany the clients from the shelter to the hospital. And every week, they see systemic racism and they are traumatized like the nurses are traumatized I always wonder like you think you feel bad how do you think that woman felt because they are turned away and they're done it's done in such a disrespectful manner and you you just want to give up so you know the whole idea of have of being here today is not to give up keep fighting uh, and change will come we got to change it for this generation right
Well, thank you so much, Nakusa. Thank you both. And we will have more coverage from the vigil a little later on in our newscast in Montreal at Place du Canada. Pamela Pigano, City News.